welcome 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 to another grumpy old IT video in this video we're gonna take a look at IPsec tunnels uh, using the ubiquity edge router here is the edge router light this is what I'm using at my home this could apply to you personally this could apply to you installing this for a client but uh, let's get into the IPsec issues here so under VPN tab i have the latest version of the firmware you can see version 1.10.5 which is the latest at this time this series of route of of router firewall thing has uh had so many firmware uh revisions it's crazy let's say you need to set up a site-to-site -site vpn tunnel for a client or for yourself now it looks like it's easy to do not so easy really depending on on how your setup goes if you're working with a vendor or you're working with just another site that you have control over you're going to want to go in here and go into the site to site uh, vpn tab and you're always going to want to show the advanced options things to note here so your peer is going to be the router's ip address that you're trying to connect to with ipsec a description this is the tunnel to nowhere uh, local ip this should be the router's ip um, or I just use any. Uh, this basically means that any IP is allowed to connect to this router over IPsec. And then you have the, your encryption uh, level here and your hash and your uh, Diefel Hyman, Hyman group, <laughs> DH group, your pre-shared secret, and then your local and remote subnet. Now, way back when I first started using these, I'm like, okay, well, where are all the other settings? Because as you know, may or may not know, IPsec sort of has two negotiations, one's IKE and one's ESP. So you're thinking, okay, uh, I get, a, I get a, a, a form from a vendor that says, I wanna set up a VPN tunnel with you. And typically what they're gonna show you is something like, uh, they'll give you the peer IP address, they'll give you the encryption, they'll give you the hash, they'll give you the group. And then there's another section that may be the same as the first group. So uh, the IKE group might match the ESP group, but in some cases it might not. And, and, and then you're looking here, well, where's, where's PFS? Where's perfect forward secrecy? Like I don't, I don't have any options here. I don't know why uh, Ubiquitous doesn't add this to the UI. If you're gonna add an IPsec site to site section, then why not just put everything here? Why do I got to go dicking around into the CLI if I'm not really familiar with it or look up stuff on the, uh, you know, go to the forums and look up the commands on how to do, like, if you're going to put this, why can't you just put all of it? it makes no freaking sense to me. So I'm going to show you here, uh, very critical for you guys uh, doing this in the config tree, go into config tree. Basically, these are all the fields and settings you can have on this router, just in a in a in a visual sort of you know hierarchy. So you're gonna go into VPN, and you'll notice if I go into IPsec, if you go down to site to site, you'll actually see. So you site to site, there's nothing. Go into peer, you'll see the peer that I had on the previous IPsec uh, tab. Now, if I go into here, now you're gonna get some more detailed settings about the IPsec tunnel. Hold on, dog. Dog is going crazy. One sec. Quiet. You'll see that uh, the connection type is initiate. So obviously you know that initiate is something that can be uh, connection type is something that can be toggled. Default ESP. These can all be toggled through the CLI. Anyways, you don't need to know a lot of this. Uh, in this part here, the site to site doesn't really change that often. Uh, there's your description. There's your local. Whatever. Blah blah. What's authentication? You have your, this is where the pre-shared key is stored here, which is the most important, the ESP group and the IKE group. Now let's expand ESP group. You have sort of like a group name, which is F O O zero. If you open up F O O zero in here, you'll see compression disabled, your lifetime that you can change your mode uh, from tunnel to something else, which I don't know what else you would use there. And then you have PFS enabled. So right off the bat, you know, PFS is enabled. And you know it didn't tell you that in the IPsec setup. We're gonna see the proposal group and you'll see the AES-128 and the SHA-1 that you saw in the IPsec tab. Now, let's go to IKE. 
You go down to the IKE group, you go into F00, uh, F00, which, you know, is the same. I don't know why. Anyways, go down to proposal one and you'll see that your DH group is set to five, your AES is set to 128, and your hash, hash is set to SHA-1. You're like, why does this matter? Okay, it matters because what if on the vendor, the form that the vendor gave you, you need you needed to change the ESP group algorithm, uh, encryption algorithm. Let's say they needed uh, AES-256 here and for some reason they needed AES-128 here. Well, you can't change that from here. You only have, you can't change that from here. You only have the one option here. Where's, where's the ESP settings? These are the IKE settings. Where are the ESP settings? Well, you can't do it from here. Your PFS, there's no PFS here. So it's assumed that PFS, PFS is enabled. How would, how would you disable it if you want to disable it, right? If we change this to MD5 and hit apply, foo, is there, oh, PFS is still enabled. But what if I wanted it with MD5 and no PFS? You don't have that option. So you gotta come in here to make those tweaks in config tree. I guarantee you'll have to come in here to do something or you'll have to do it through the command line. One other problem, I don't know if this is a bug or whatever, but let's say I go into ESP proposal, oops, shit. If I go into ESP and I say disable, I wanna, I wanna shut PFS off, okay? I'm gonna hit disable, I go down here, I hit preview, I hit apply. I'm gonna go back into dashboard just to refresh. IPsec, ESP, here. Okay, PFS stays disabled, right? Okay, cool, sure. Let's go to VPN. You're almost ready to go with the vendor or something and they said they gave you the wrong subnet. So I'm gonna say, oh, I gotta change this. They gave me the wrong subnet, it's not 65, it's 75. Everything else stays the same though. They gave me everything else correct, but they just screwed up on giving me their subnet. So I hit apply there. Okay, configuration has been applied successfully. So you're like, all right, let's go do some testing. So you open up your command prompt. You ping, you ping, and you don't have access. The tunnel's not coming up. You don't know why. So you go back into config tree. You go into IPsec. You go into ESP group. You go into foe, and it's enabled. Well, who told that thing to re-enable itself? Okay, I learned this the hard way, is that whenever you make a change here in in this particular tab, it, re it like resets everything else back to defaults. <laughs> Disable, and I'm gonna change my lifetime from 36 to 84600, okay? So I guess, so what happens is they, some guy calls you and says, oh, the last guy that gave you the wrong subnet gave you the wrong subnet. And I'm like, whoa, wait, the guy gave me the, the wrong subnet twice? He's like, yeah. All right, fine, let's just get this thing going. And they say, okay, it was supposed to be 85. You say, okay, 85. All right, configuration implies that. So then you go and you, you, you start, you, you go and you start pinging and tunnel's not coming up. You're like, WTF, I'm gonna go back into dashboard. This stupid thing, I hate computers. If this guy gave me the wrong tunnel one more time, I'm gonna go crazy. What the hell is going on? Let me check my settings, go into foo. And what do you know? She's back. To defaults if you're just doing this for the first time and you don't know that whenever you come in here it's going to reset all the other settings of the ipsec tunnel then it's going to frustrate you so why the hell can't ubiquity just put all the settings in here and then you can just control it from one place make all the changes to ike all the changes to esp in here make all the changes to authentication lifetime everything in here and when you save it it just saves it and doesn't actually, it must restart some process, right? Like I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna harp on this any longer. If you look up here, right, it says warning, applying changes in UI will override all changes made by CLI. That's a little deceiving. Like I'm not sure what, what that, like, I don't know, that could be worded better. Applying changes in UI will override all changes made by CLI. Why have the site-to-site -site tunnel tab at all? What purpose does it serve?
Mm-hmm. <laughs>